Today we are doing crochet bingo round number two. Hopefully I won't bugger up this one as badly as I managed to bugger up round number one. If you would like to see me make a fool of myself, I will put a link for that down in the description so you can check that out when you're done here. Fingers crossed there won't be any screw ups in this one, but I make no promises. Before we start playing bingo today, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you who left suggestions for bingo squares on the last video. I was hoping to get a few and have enough to do another, you know, video, maybe two. But boy, did you guys deliver. There were so many suggestions and really great ones too. So thank you to everyone who left one. If you would still like to do that, you can leave your suggestions down in the comments of this video or on the previous one if you want to go watch that too. And not only did some of you give me just square suggestions, you gave me suggestions for entire bingo cards. So I have a couple of those in the works that I'm really excited to work on and I hope you guys will enjoy them as well when they eventually come out. But that's all I wanted to say now. We can hop on over to the spinning wheel, which we used last time as well, to find out what our first crochet bingo square will be. Okay, what is, where am I? This is the issue when you have too many tabs open. Okay, there is my wheel. We're going to spin for bingo square number one. What is it? Ah, no, wait, hit the pause button. I forgot to screen grab. And if I don't do that, you guys, can't see anything. Let's try that again. Back to the wheel and spin. Ooh, use a different yarn per row. Okay, that's not bad. Remove that now, use a different yarn per row. Now, if you watched the last video, you will know that it was pretty much the the octopus saga. We made a whole heap of octopuses because that's the pattern I chose to use in that video. What I thought I would do, because you guys were very generous with your suggestions, so I should have at least three, maybe four more of these specific kinds of bingo cards to do. I will take a pattern I created in the previous bingo game. In this case, I created a jellyfish and I will use that for the featured pattern in the next, or in this case, the current bingo game. So I designed this last time. I'm going to use that as my basic pattern for this bingo game. And if you're wondering what happened to all of the octopus, I put them in the jar back here. This is going to be my <laughs> my challenge creature jar. I've got my whales in there from my six designs challenge and all my many, many, many octopus are in there and whatever I design this time will be going in there as well. So this jellyfish pattern is 10 rounds in total, but then there's also the legs, but I just grabbed out 10, 10 different yarns and they're different in terms of fibers, there's acrylic, there's cotton, there's wool, there's wool, <laughs> there's wool, there's blends here. So we've got a range of different stuff. They're different in terms of brand and they're different in terms of weight. So I don't know what hook size I should be going with for this or even where I should start. Should I start with the thinner stuff and work my way to the thicker yarn? But I think my best bet is just to grab maybe like a four or a 4.5 millimeter hook and just go to town. All done. This thing actually came out looking okay, all things considered. It's exactly the type of bizarre monster you'd expect to find in the deepest trenches of the ocean. So I'm going to put you there and then we can cross off our first bingo square and I will double check I'm crossing off the correct ones this time. Then we're gonna go back over to the spinning wheel and see what card number two is going to be. And go. Mm. 
that's less of a challenge and more of a cruel and unusual punishment. Grow out my yarn. I might do a blue jellyfish this time. Make sure I concentrate because I cannot lose count here. One. Increase. And this is where the challenge starts because I usually do my first two rounds without a stitch marker. And it's in number three where I place it. So this is where the concentration has to come into play. I've got to focus. One. Let me tell you, this one had my anxiety spiking. I use stitch markers for a reason and any of my fellow spoonies out there who deal with brain fog know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's done. If that pattern was any larger, I probably would have struggled a bit more with it, but we can now cross it off our crochet bingo card. Oh, and look at that, right in the center. Mark you off. And then we'll go spin for square number three. I've had some pretty good ones so far. Let's, <laughs> let's see if we can keep that record going and spin. A bathroom item. Okay, um, I'm just thinking what sort of bathroom item can I make? The first thing that sprang to mind here was to crochet a loofah using, I think it's called hyperbolic crochet, where you sort of just keep increasing outwards, but I think that would take far too long. Next thought was a face washer or a flannel, whatever you happen to call those squares that you wash your face with. But again, same issue, it would take a little bit longer than I would like for this challenge. So I think I will do a little face scrubby. I have seen those crocheted most regularly with the puff stitch, but if you've been around here for a while, you do know that I like popcorn stitches. So I wanna try one with a popcorn stitch. Will the popcorn stitch be too bulky? There's only one way to find out. One face scrubby complete. <laughs> I think I was right, the popcorn stitches are a little bit bulky, but I'm not going to be trying this out because my sister will yell at me. She always does after she's done my makeup and I, you know, scratch my face and I leave like gouges in the foundation she's put on. I will not be trying that out at the moment. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm probably not going to try it out later either. <laughs> but what I will do is spin for my fourth, no, hang on. First we need to mark off the bingo square. And that was bathroom item down in row number four. So bathroom item is crossed off. Now we will spin for our fourth, go. Use favorite hook or yarn. To be honest, I don't really have a favorite hook or yarn. I have the ones that I used most frequently, which is what I'm probably going to use here. And that would be my 3.5 millimeter hook. I use this in pretty much all my amigurumi patterns. And the yarn that I use most often is the Marvel Four Seasons eight ply. I do have some scrap of that in here somewhere. Some, I've got some green. We might make ourselves a green jellyfish this time. Actually, I've got a couple of shades of green in the, the Marvel 8 ply. So we might mix it up a little bit instead of doing jellyfish all the same color. Well, we've done four challenges so far and three of those have resulted in jellyfish. Hopefully, 
on the next challenge, we get something that's a little bit different. But first, I'll cross off you's favourite hook slash yarn. And there you are down the bottom. Now that that's taken care of, we'll spin for our next square. Spin. Use a new technique. Okay, the technique that I've decided to use is going to be one I did in my trying TikTok crochet hacks video and some of you told me it's called the pseudo crab stitch and I'm going to, I've got this bit of scrap here and I'm going to create a border around this using that technique and I think I'll bump up to my maybe 4.5 millimeter hook for this. So you insert your hook into whichever stitch you're going to do this with and then you work into the stitch, yarn over, pull through as if you were doing a single crochet. But then I just pull up slightly with my hook to loosen the tension a bit and then spin and then finish the single crochet. It still might have been a little bit tight. And when I first did this, it took me a few attempts to, to sort of get it right. But I'll make my way across the top here, providing I have enough yarn. There we go. So I think that looks pretty cool, that technique. Now people were saying in the comments of the that TikTok video that the crab stitch was actually easier. That may be the case, but I can only ever remember using the crab stitch once when I made a beanie, and it must have been a few years ago at this point. So I really can't compare the two. And I suppose it's just a matter of what you get used to. If you use this first, that's probably easier to you. But if you know the crab stitch, that's probably easier. But I like this so whenever I need a quick pretty easy decorative border that may be my go-to for now until I relearn the crab stitch. Let's mark that one off. A uh, new technique is down the bottom and then we'll spin again. Use a novelty yarn. Yeah, I don't use novelty yarns very often, but I do have some stashed away in a drawer somewhere. I'll go find that. I grabbed these two and yeah, I'll put this camera on so you can have a bit of a closer look. So this one's all like hairy. And then we've got this one here. I reckon I'll include both in the pattern. I'll use this for the body of the jellyfish, but I might use this one for the legs because these, these little furry bits can be the stingers. And I'll just crochet with them together like that it might make things a little bit easier or maybe not it feels a bit weird uh, let's see is the 4.5 going to be too big oh no this is this is going to be a bit of a disaster isn't it I think I've got the correct number of stitches I need for round two, but I don't know for sure because I can't see them to count them. I'm pretty certain my stitch count is incorrect, but you know what, that's fine. I can fix that up. I've decided to go with this yarn to make the the frilly bit. I wanted something to give me a bit of variation in this pattern and I'll bump up the hook size for that because I need to work in the front loops only but it's pretty difficult to see the front loops through this this jungle of fluff. Well hated that. Working with this novelty stuff is just miserable. I did not like it at all and I dare say I won't be doing it again. This stuff might look pretty in a skein and as far as I'm concerned it can stay there. <laughs> Let's finally cross that one off. Novelty, where's novelty? Yarn up the top. 
Bingo is not looking great so far. <laughs> we don't really have many lined up. Maybe, maybe our next spin will change that. And spin. That didn't work. And spin. Keep going, keep going. Oh. Design a fruit. That, that seems pretty straightforward. I'm going to design a dragon fruit. Well, not exactly. I'm going to take inspiration from dragon fruit and maybe crochet a little dragon fruit character. And the reason I'm going with dragon fruit is that my sister, my sister really likes them and I thought she'd appreciate having a little, a little key ring or something. So I'm thinking, how do I do this? I might start at the bottom and you know the bits on the side of the dragon fruit? I might use those to maybe create like some hair, but we'll see, we'll see how this pans out. That's my little dragon fruit dude. Um, he's a bit rushed. I'll have to see if my my sister actually wants that. But I'm going to set you down and I'm going to try and speed through the next couple because I'm running out of time. Um, I don't think we're going to be getting bingo today, but who knows, I might get a, a good run in the next two or three. First, let's check that off. Where is design a fruit? That's done. Time for yet another spin. Go. And we have... Crochet a lolly or a candy for those of you out there who call it that. And I think I made, it looks more like it's got wings than anything else. I think I made the ends of the wrapper a little bit too long but it still counts for my bingo square. Because I'm almost out of time, I think I'll spin for my next challenge. And depending on what it is, I may crochet it now, or I may start with that in a couple of days when I can, you know, finish off, <laughs> finish off this bingo video. So what was that? Uh, crochet a lolly. And I need to find that you're up the top there. That is now marked off. Head back over to my spinning wheel and then go design a farm animal that's that's going to take too long <laughs> so i'll keep that in mind actually i might write that down that's probably a better plan and when i can do this again hopefully tomorrow but if not in the next couple of days I will start off with that challenge. Well, I got some stuff to do. I won't be doing this for at least a day or two, but for you guys, luckily, it should only be two or three seconds. Three, two, one, and we're back. And it's been about a week because I ended up getting sick. So I think where we left off was with design a farm animal. And I actually did that in advance. made a little piggy here I don't know how well you can see that but I'll put it on here so there is my little piggy I made for design a farm animal and I wanted to get that out of the way so we could dive straight back into bingo when I was feeling better which thankfully I am now that means the first thing we're going to do is cross off design a farm animal on our bingo square and we can spin for our next prompt um, I'm hoping <laughs> I'm not going to have a repeat of last time because what ended up happening was when I closed out of the wheel, it didn't save. So I had to go back in and manually retype all the remaining prompts. And I have double checked, 
but that doesn't mean I didn't miss one. So fingers crossed we don't have a repeat of last time where I think I get bingo, but I really don't. And spin. And this time we have... Okay, add part to a pattern. You know what? I might take inspiration from my little piggy I designed last time and add some wings to that. And I don't know if I've got any white scrap yarn, but I do have some cream. So we'll just make some little, little piggy wings with this. pig with wings. I think that's pretty cute. So you can go up there now, unless I need you for a third bingo square, but we will cross add part to pattern off. And we're getting closer to bingo here a little bit in a couple of spots, but we'll get even closer hopefully after we spin for our next challenge. That's the wrong tab. Hop on over to the wheel and Spin. Inside out pattern. So basically what this one means is as I'm crocheting my amigurumi, instead of turning it the right way out, I have to leave the wrong sides of the stitches exposed which isn't too hard. It's just gonna feel really weird, I think. What color haven't I made a jellyfish in yet? I've got green, blue, yellow, rainbow, gray. Uh, how about orange? I've got to say that this feels so wrong. I feel like I'm committing some sort of Amigurumi sin here. <laughs> that was odd. That <laughs> crocheting amigurumi inside out just does not feel right. And you know what? The hardest part of this was actually the final round trying to do six decreases because the front loops weren't facing the right way. It was really tricky to work into them, but that is complete now. So we'll put you with the, the rest of your mates over there. Let's head on back to the wheel for another spin. What do we got this time? Combine two patterns. You know what? We'll combine two patterns from this bingo game. I reckon we'll combine the pig and the jellyfish. We'll make a piggy fish. I'm, I'm picturing how this is going to look and it's, it's amusing me. So I'm going to get up the pig pattern first. I think I'll crochet the top half as the pig and then the bottom half as the jellyfish. Here we go. Piggy fish coming up. You know what? I'll check I'll count out how many rounds I should do. I think I'll do one round after the first set of legs. So that is round, I can just look at the pattern. I don't need to count, I can just look at the pattern. Round 10. So 10 rounds of pig, the rest will be jellyfish. Yeah. Alrighty, so that was round 10 of the pig. I am now going to switch to the jellyfish pattern and I will need to do a little bit of tweaking for this one but it shouldn't be too difficult. I've just got to chuck in an additional few decrease rounds. All hail piggy fish. <laughs> Uh, this has got to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever made. And I kind of adore it. <laughs> what a great bingo square that was. All right, piggy fish, you can go up there with your 
your land bound counterpart and let's cross off combine two patterns oh with that one we are now one square away from bingo on the diagonal so to get bingo there we just need crochet a dessert come on crochet a dessert <sighs> or for your head I can actually make something useful here because my niece has really been into bows and thing, big things she can wear in her hair lately. So I might make her a bow because I have some hair clips kicking around somewhere. So I can make a bow and then I can either glue it or sew it to a hair clip and that'll be a present for her. I'm going to use this yarn because another thing that my niece is really into at the moment is rainbows. So I think she'll appreciate the colors. So I don't know where the clips are at the moment, but I will find one and then either glue it or sew it and she can she can wear that in her hair if she wants to. Alright, marking that one off too and oh that's good news. So on the fifth column we just need one there for bingo as well. So now we've got two spots we can get bingo in. We're getting there. And back to the wheel for... Wrong hook size. Now I think with this one, by wrong hook size, I think I meant I'll use my regular eight ply yarn, but I have to use a hook that's either too large or too small for it. And I'm going to go with a hook that is larger because trying to use a hook that is smaller is just going to end with me frustrated. <laughs> so. I'm going to skip that entirely and just go for the larger hook. All right, one more jellyfish coming up. I usually use a 3.5 millimeter hook with eight ply yarn, but I'm going to use a five for this challenge. I was thinking of using something even larger, like a six or an eight, but I think that's just a bit too much. So I'll stick with the five and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> In hindsight, should have used a bigger crochet hook. The five millimeter hook was fine. I was expecting there to be larger gaps between my stitches, but there aren't really any gaps at all looking at it like this. But that does mean we can cross off another square on our card. And with that, we have yet another spot that we can get bingo on. So that's three now. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we get one of those this time. Well, let's spin again. I think we have bingo. After last time, I will have to double check, but I think we have bingo. Crochet a dessert. Okay. I think the easiest thing, well, better not use that. <laughs> wrong wrong challenge i think the easiest thing to crochet for this will be just a, a little cake and, and there we go one cake all finished it's a little bit lopsided, but when it comes to cake, it's how it tastes, not how it looks. Though I have a sneaking suspicion that this one might uh, look better than it actually tastes. But I'm not going to be the one who figures that out. So I'm going to add you to the collection here. What I need to do before I finish up is just double check my bingo card. That first round of bingo made me incredibly paranoid, so I want to double check. 
I am in the clear. I actually has a bingo this time. So woohoo, round two of bingo complete. And I actually think this round went a bit faster than the first one. I feel like I did a lot more challenges in bingo number one than I did here, but I'd have to go back and watch that video to check. So that is all I have for you guys today. A couple of things before we go here. If you have any bingo square suggestions, please leave those down in the comments and I may include those in either the next round or even a round after that because I still think I have enough suggestions from last time to do another couple of bingo squares. However, the next bingo challenge I plan to attempt is going to be slightly different than this one. I don't want to give too much away at this point, but I think it will be a lot of fun. Well, <laughs> I think I'll have fun. Whether or not you guys think so will be determined when that video goes out, but it may be a while yet because if it does go to plan, it's going to include making a few much larger projects. So obviously that's going to take a little bit longer to film and edit. So thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If you have a favourite thing that I designed, let me know what that is because when it comes to these challenges, anything I design, I am open to putting the pattern out on the channel at some point. So if you have one you want to see, tell me what that is. But I will see you all next week with another video.